Hey everybody, welcome back to the Neverboard Gaming Community. It's Alex Brangen here with uh, Theo for the first time on the commentation. Doing more action from our modern MTG Saturday event. We have Justin Weeks piloting Jeskai Geist against John Jepson piloting Traverse Shadow. We've seen both of these decks before. So, uh, Theo, I believe uh, I recommended the latter of these two decks to you. Yeah, Since you yeah. were wondering what to build. Yeah, you definitely were. Uh, I believe you were telling me to build the Shadows deck. And uh, I was contemplating it, but there were some cards that I was just missing to actually build it correctly. And the Jeskai, I believe, wasn't I talking to you about that? The um, Jeskai deck? Um, this is not quite the normal Jeskai control deck that I've been piloting lately. This is more focused on just getting guys to stay trapped in play and just protecting the queen. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. That's interesting. So more of an aggro route versus control route. Oh, it's still a control deck. It just has you know more focus on uh, protecting the queen, like I said, or protecting the king in this case, I suppose, because the queen would be the angel token that just keeps going back over and over. You can kill her all you want. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But like you'll notice, one of the cards in Justin's hands is Justin's opening hands. Um, looks like uh, Justin's going to take a mulligan here. He's got an Aganjo Castle. That's that mono white land you see there. Oh, uh, is that what was that one do again? So it's the one that taps to prevent two damage to a legendary creature. And you, yep, legendary, got it. So it's a good way to shake off those global removal spells that care about damage, so like Anger of the Gods and Pyroclasm. Yeah. Even even Kozilek's Return. Oh yeah, I like that card. Because <laughs> it's colorless, instant speed, deals two damage to everything. You know, you don't have to worry about the flash. I can't, I can't remember if uh, Traverse Shadow plays Kozilek's Return. Hmm. Um, and it's Cyborg. Is that Inquisition? It yep. That's Inquisition, yep. Inquisition. We got a turn one Inquisition from John Jepson, so there's the entirety of Justin's hand. Looks like he's got a Geist already, which is probably going to be the thing taken away. There's also yeah. two Serum Visions, a Mana Leak, and a Lightning Bolt. Yeah. See how John is uh, writing down everything? That's a really good thing, because then he doesn't have to worry about, oh, what did you have in your hand, or false information from his opponent. Yeah, this is good practice. This is a good thing to do to make sure that you can keep track of what's in your opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. And of course he went with the Geist, which yeah. is the correct choice. That's, this. That, was, that was the obvious correct choice there. Yeah, entirely. And he, as long as John plays something that can survive a bolt in turn one, he doesn't have to worry about the lightning bolt. Yeah, Weeks wants that mana up for it, but is he going to tap for Serum Visions here? I think he yep. should, and he is. Yep. He top decks Ancestral Visions, scries into planes. Two and, lands? No, it's a planes and I think another Geist, actually. Oh. I couldn't quite tell what the second card was. Yeah, no, the first one was the planes. Uh, he kept, it looked like he kept it on top, the second one, he moved it to the top? No, no, the second one is still on the bottom. He kept uh, the planes on top. He wants to hide it from any other hand hate so that if that second card is Geist, he'll be able to cast it right away before definitely. Justin gets a chance to see it with a hand hate. Very true, very true. This is actually another good point of play, assuming that is what the play was. Oh, I guess no see, he drew Tarmogoyf the planes. or anything like that. Yeah, no Tarmogoyf turn two. John Jepson's going to play it defensively here. Ooh. That's the Ancestral, Ancestral Vision from Vision's the board. awesome. And a Ganjo Castle. Yep. A Ganjo Castle going to at least bluff Path to Exile. True. Uh, is he fetching right off the bat? No. No, nope, he's going to cast the Potsies. Ooh, sorry. So he's going to see Potsies. the Snapcaster Mage. Oh, I don't, I don't remember him top decking his Snapcaster. No, nah, that might have been what he drew from the first Serum Vision. Oh, you know what? I think, I think it might have been, yeah. Yeah, that can explain why we didn't get to see that at first. Still, the hand still looks really neat. I mean, he definitely has options for game for his turn three play, and we still don't. We didn't get a real good view on what the top card is going to be for his next one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Snapcaster. it's going to take the Snapcaster. Yeah. That's what I would do. I mean, there are some people who would go for the Mana Leak, but I think Snapcaster is the better choice. I mean, if he went with the Mana Leak, then he's has. Well, he top he top decked an Ancestral Vision with uh, with that first draw from before. What did he top deck with the Serum Visions? Oh wait, no, you know what? Snapcaster. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, was so that a Geist he just drew? Yes, it was. Okay, I was okay. correct. Uh, so, yes, awesome. he's just going to windmill slam that. Yep. Yeah. Hope that Jepson doesn't have some kind of target player sacrifice. He could have Liliana's oh, in this back. I can't remember if it's in there or not. Yeah, true, true, true. I mean, if he does do the turn, you know, for Lily and make him sacrifice a creature, you know, that, that would be the ideal play right now because to get around that. I don't think there's many other things that uh, this deck could possibly play without sideboarding end cards. I'm pretty sure he does have a lead on it, though, because in a deck like Traverse Shadow, you do want to get to Delirium as easily as possible. And having some number of Planeswalkers in the deck, Lily out of the Veil being the obvious best choice. Mm -hmm. seems, I agree. Like a, seems like a good idea. 
He's going to go ahead and fetch again. He's going to fetch two lands here, really fix his yep. mana up. Right now his graveyard is land and sorcery. That's it. He, that's the only two card types he has in his graveyard. So. Yeah, but his, uh, for the, yeah, but that's going for Delirium. I mean, mm -hmm. if he goes for, like, Tarmogoyf or anything, he also has uh, creatures in his opponents. Well, I'm just thinking, like, a really good turn four play here since mm -hmm. it's the Liliana. Oh, yep, yeah, the Liliana we were talking about. Yep, mm -hmm. entirely. Target player sack. Don't yep. hesitate. Nope. Not at all. If he did have another land, I was just thinking to myself. It would be it would, nice if he played another land. Yeah. Like, because I don't know if he's got Lightning Bolt up, but like Traverse wouldn't help here because all it can get is a basic land. That's why mm -hmm. I was counting the card types. Lightning Bolt, kill it. Yep. Kill, He'll take that trade. Lily. He'll yeah. take that trade. Entirely. Liliana for Geist and Lightning Bolt? Yeah. That's yeah, an it's a awesome two for, two one. for one. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, the Ancestral Visions is going to go off in what, two turns? I think two, it's turns two turns, yeah. And then he's going to get a whole new grip that he has to worry about. Yeah, but right now, poor Justin Weeks stuck on just the one blue source. Cannot cast that other Serum Visions. I I don't know if Jess guy has anything to get stuff in the graveyard. I do not like that he rearranged his uh, graveyard to put both his guys together, personally. Because um, there are some decks that require certain things. In Legacy. In oh. Legacy, there I are. I didn't know if there was anything in Modern. I haven't really no. seen anything. No, and it, it's it's only relevant in Eternal formats. In Modern, it's not relevant. In the Standard, okay. it's not relevant. They don't Fair print enough. cards that do things like that anymore. Fair enough, fair enough. Ooh, Lingering Souls. Yeah, that Lingering Souls. It's gonna get there. Sometimes that's all it takes. You just play oh. a couple Spirit Tokens, get some more Spirit Tokens, and just win yeah. with those. Slow yeah, grind. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Justin's still not finding another blue source, but he's at four mana now. Yeah, I mean, definitely has enough white sources for days. Yeah, maybe he'll draw into one right he's now. He's going to draw four cards right now. Oh, there that's we go. Flooded Strands and a Spell Snare, snare. Celestial Colonnade, and... Uh, I don't know what that last that's a, is. That's a lightning bolt. It's a full is art lightning bolt. Oh, okay. Wasn't sure what that was. Going to lay down the strand. I imagine he fetches steam vents for this. Get another blue source and another red source because he's just flooded on white here. Yeah, he needs mostly blue and red at this point. I'm glad that John finally got his other land. Yeah, it looks like Jepson has the advantage right now because he was able to slip under that mana leak all game and just pick apart Justin Weeks' best cards. Yeah, I was really surprised that he let the... Uh, the Lingering Souls off. No, no, it's not that he let it off, it's that he chose to yeah, cast the to other count. Serum Visions and not hold up for Mana Leak. Oh, that's right, he only had one blue source. Yeah. That's right. Mm. So which one are you trying to favor on this? Because you play Jeskai. And, I, I, and I, play, I play Jeskai Control. Um, okay, this is a Ooh. mini Elspeth. Yeah. I, I like is this. Is that the first one, right? Yeah. Yeah, the very first one. This yep. is the one that makes 1-1 one, one soldiers and can give them flying. And yep, if plus, you get to an emblem, your stuff's indestructible. Yeah, it's always good. I, I, I personally don't like this Liliana, but that's just me. John Jeff's going to cycle a Street Wraith here, go to yep. 12. Yeah, so man. now Death Shadow is online, but only as a 1-1. One, one. Yep, yep, that is true. Yeah, gonna come right at this Elspeth. Uh, he might flash back. Is he mana flooded here? Because he missed one land drop earlier. But now he has land. Grim Ooh, Flare, man. and that's gonna that get spell snare. He didn't see it. He yep. didn't. He didn't know that was there, so he took a risk and. Yep. Uh, got flashback. There's the flashback that yeah. I was expecting him. I'm really surprised he didn't do that uh, first. But importantly, he does now have delirium between the creature, the planeswalker, the lands, and the sorceries. Yes, this is true. Um, I think I would have played the. Lingering Souls flashback first to try baiting out the mana leak that we know he has. Uh, he only had one mana available. That's why he did it. Because he, he knew he was going to get underneath a mana leak, but he had no idea Weeks had Spell Snare. Mm -hmm. Remember, he had all of his mana tapped except for one to cast the Elspeth. Oh, no. I thought, cause, did he just play a land for He that? just played a land, yeah. Oh, okay. I messed he up. just played the basic island. I'm going for another plus. Going to make another token. Yep. Going to try and race Jepson here. It's not quite a winning race, though. I guess four spirit tokens. This Elspeth might die here. Yeah. Depen depending on whether Weeks is willing to spend this lightning bolt. Hmm. All at Elspeth. Let's see what Weeks does in response. Maybe a lightning bolt, because doesn't he still have the full art one? It, well, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. If he does decide yeah. to lightning bolt one of them to save Elspeth, oh, there it, it, it is. I don't like the play. I really don't. I understand why he did it, but I really don't like it. I mean, he could just be. He'd rather have Elspeth be the target of the Lingering Soul Spirits than his life total, which is an understandable thing because once the Elspeth's gone, it's entirely his life. Yeah. So he could just be buying time until he could get something. This this is one way to pull ahead in the race. I can understand the logic, and he does still have the mana leak up, and Jepson knows it, so he's playing very conservative here. On a third Geist of Saint Traft. Oh my goodness, just in weeks. Top decking everything he needs to stay in this race. 
And another soldier token going to be summoned by Elspeth here. Past turn, Jepson going to crack a fetch land at EOT. Really? Hmm. Let's see what happens here. Jepson I mean, really hasn't been finding that much gas lately, and when he has, it's been countered. Yep. And there's still that mana leak available. Justin also just played a Celestial Colony, too, so next turn he's going to have even more offense. Yeah, that's a definitely a thing. This is oh. the last opportunity to get rid of Elspeth, and Justin yep. not going not gonna to be had by a Lightning Bolt here. He sends in all three Spirit Tokens. So yep. the Elspeth goes down. Now I Justin see a Lightning just, Helix. Yeah, he just drew Lightning Helix. Yeah. That's really important here. Is that not land? Rank. Mana League, Lightning Helix? I can't. What's the third one? I think that's another land. But another land? Oh, I'll put down the land. Oop, he's going for the offense. Okay, here comes Colonnade. Uh, not not going to leave it back. He's just going to go ahead and Yeah, he's going to swing in all four. Do the... Well, yeah. Yep, yep, because that's, in, that's yeah. eight in the air. That's eight oh, in the air. Oh, he's hit everything. Everything's everything. going after it. Uh, he's going to... John Jepson's going to fatal push the Celestial Colonnade. Uh, Lightning oop. Helix in response targeting Jepson's face. Yep. The Colonnade is going to die. That's still game. Because that's yeah. nine. Nine damage. Four, five, six, seven, eight, yep. nine. Yep, and he's at eight. Yep. So Justin Weeks going to take game one here. Definitely. I think he's more comfortable with this deck than like the regular Just Sky Control. If he's ever played just regular Just Sky Control. It seems interesting. Um, I feel like the Shadow deck could have had it because it was coming out really strong at, at the beginning. Yeah, that, that early hand hate is always really encouraging, but you got to have something to follow it up with. And like yeah. that Liliana trade was perfect. That yeah, was a that, very good that was a perfect turn three, or no, it was turn four he played it. Turn four, yeah. Turn four. He missed the land drop. Yeah, but it's still, he even got land. By the end of it, he was getting his land right where he needed it. Yeah, but unfortunately, the Just only the gas he found after that was with one Grim Flayer. Did not yeah. know that Justin Weeks had the critical spell snare. I think that might have been that turning point. Yeah, I agree, because that was really there. unexpected. Um, very much so. See, I don't know if I would want to play the Shadow deck personally because it's four colors, correct? Yes. It's it's Jun with Splash of White or is it it's Abzan with Splash of Red? It's Jun with a Splash of White. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I've played both, so I just didn't know which what was the formula for it. Yeah, the, the Splash of White is mainly for Lingering Souls, but there are other white cards it could be playing. I imagine Jun Jepson's probably going to be boarding in Collective Brutality here because most of Jepson's deck is Instance of Sorceries. Mm. So... Well, I mean, you play Jeskai. What would Jeskai be playing up against it? Um, well, if he's got another Spell Snare, that seems to be a good idea because a lot of John Jepson's threats are two drops the yeah. between the Tarmogoyfs and the Grim Flayers because you don't always want to be using Path to Exiles on those when there's Death Shadows to kill. Shadows plays Bobs, right? You know, Dark Confidant? Um, I don't know, actually. But hmm. if he does, that's not a terrible idea. I can't imagine that he has anything in the deck that costs more than three. Besides, like, Street Wraith, I guess. Hmm. Fair enough, fair enough. The deck doesn't do anything with Delve because it needs its graveyard. How many cards did they put in, in a piece? You didn't realize that, or no? Uh, I didn't really notice. It's uh, it's not really that relevant, I don't think. I think Justin Weeks put in, like, six or seven, but that's just me guessing. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to know because even if your opponent puts in a lot of cards, it's not guaranteed that they're going to take out that many cards as far as what they're putting in versus what they take out. You like that old uh, rope-a-dope trick, th that old uh, mentalism? Yeah, because like even I've done it in the past for bigger tournaments, like for Legacy or some of Standard when I was doing it, I'll put in like four, six cards from my sideboard in my main board, and as I'm taking out, I'll take out those same exact cards. I've, I've heard many stories of pros actually doing something similar. Where because they'll it's shuffle in their mind. whole sideboard and then like take out what they don't want. Mm-hmm. Yep, I've heard that too. It's also a legitimate way to just decide what your deck should look like in a post-board situation. Because if you know your deck, you know what your sideboard looks like. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need to keep them separated. You just have to whittle it down to whatever 60 or, in some cases, I guess, 61 cards you want to be playing. Because that's legal to do now. Mm -hmm. I like the way they shuffled. They shuffled very well. <laughs> 
Ooh, yeah. I saw Blood Moon. Blood Moon, yeah. That's yeah. that's really strong. I forgot he was playing that, but unfortunately uh, Weeks did not, not find enough land. lands, yeah. so he's going to have to mulligan. See, I don't know if that hurts him, though, because I saw a lot of dual lands. I don't. I, what is, I wonder what his uh, ratio for basics versus non-basics for him to be playing such a card since he's playing three colors. Well, you saw he found a lot of basics in that first game. He had a basic island and two basic planes. That yeah. Was, for, for a while, that was half his land. So, Blood Moon doesn't really hurt him that much. It hurts Jepson a lot, though, because his deck is almost purely dual lands. Yeah. Ooh, well, I definitely see a lot of land. So Three land and Geist, I think that's worth it. Spell Snare and Geist. Yeah. Yeah. He's just showing it off now. Yeah. He knows it's keepable. That Scry is almost irrelevant. But he's going to keep it on top anyway. It's oh. almost like keeping a yep, 7. That's, that's goodbye, Geist. Yep. The turn 1 Inquisition again. The Geist is going away. Oh, no. There was no Geist. No, no. There is. There yeah. is. Serum Vision, Spell Snare, Geist. Yeah. Well, if I was him, I wouldn't cast that uh, Serum Vision until turn 2. Yeah, hold up the Spell Snare. Exactly. That that. But that's coming from me. No, it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah. Because it also gives you an opportunity for a free fetch. Yeah, it gives you a free fetch. You don't have to worry, I and mean, you bluff that you're going to counter whatever your turn or your opponent's turn two game, which will be John's turn two play. Uh, still, if you're in John's position, you have to take the Geist here, just so that you yeah, don't no, have you to have to because Liliana. that's his win con. That's how he lost the last game, actually. No, no, no. How he lost the last game was Elspeth, and mm. that one spell snare. Yeah, well, the spell snare is what cost him, but no, Justin's actually going to Serum Vision's turn one here. I don't like the play. I, I don't like I it at all. I really. understand why he did it, but I don't like it. No, I think I would have waited. We'll see if a Grim Flayer or a Tarmogoy shows up here. Sorcery Creature lands. It could so be that Scavenging Goose, be a, too. I it, mean, could, it could be Scavenging Goose as well. You know, that would also be he, really good. Because Jeskai plays Snapcaster Mage, and Scavenging Goose yeah. is a great way against that. I've played many, many green decks. I know yeah. this as well as anyone. But yeah, I'm just counting up the card types in the graveyard for Tarmogoy here. Oh, yeah. If Tarmogoy um, comes down, it's going to be a 3 that's 4. A, yeah. There oh, there's yep. the Tarmogoy. Yeah, I totally saw that coming. Fetching. And this is why you don't tap out when you have that spell snare. <laughs> that, that's why I said I don't know why he did it. I, I really don't. I think that was a very bad play mistake on his part. Because that, that Goyf is already out of bolt range. Just mm -hmm. Leaks is going to And look, he went with a basic land because he, he's fearing possibly a Blood Moon. I don't know if he's played him in the past, but he definitely did. Why, why would he fear... Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, John Jepson. John, yeah. John got the oh, I was, I was, I was, no, gonna, I was no. looking at Justin Leaks out of the no, table. That's no, no, my, no, that's no. I'm bad. talking about John. Yeah. John is, is yeah. I guess, playing around the Blood Moon. I guess he's played him in the past or... Play tested against him to know that he's going to side those in. Well, John Jepson knows this meta, so he knows that sometimes these Jeskai decks do like to bring in the surprise Blood Moon. It's not something you would expect out of a three color deck, certainly oh, not as a four no, of, but no. yeah, see, he found the basic four, so now his colors yeah. are set up. Blood Moon is completely turned but off. But even if he's not worrying about the colors, is that it gives him abrupt decay, which gets rid of the yeah the Blood Moon, so he doesn't have to worry about it now. And there's Liliana the Veil, going to make both players discard. Oh, we'll yep. see if that increases the Tarmogoy's power. Instant now in the graveyard yep. as well. So Tarmogoy's a 4-5. Abrupt Decay and a Spell Snare. You put in the Spell Snare. Oh, but Justin Weeks has the path to exile. He top yep. decked it. Yep. And there's no basics left in John's deck. Ooh, really? Yeah, he just has the one Swamp and the one Forest. We uh, actually saw this in a previous game. I, I, I would play at least one or two more basics. My highest cost is a three cost. I would play at least one more basic. And another Geist of St. Traff. Justin Weeks just keeps top decking straight gas. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I'm, it's going to get eaten by Liliana. Oh, yeah, by far. Like, that's that's the correct play by far. It's, but John has to think about it. If he does do that, then she's immediately in bolt range. So if that's his only way of doing something, he may need to think of it another way. I don't know, but that's still the same two-for-one as that first game. I'd still take that trade. I mean, you still have to make them sacrifice the guys. There's just no question about it. It was just, you know, a couple very lucky top decks. It would be Justin's really part. nice if he had a second Liliana to do sack and play another one. Don't play another one yet. Make him kill this first one. Oh, and There's another, another Tarmogoyf. Tarmogoyf. That's awesome. Yeah. And that was a 5-6. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, it's not. No, it's four. It's uh, nope. instant, you look. instant land, land sorcery, sorcery creature. That's it. Creature, yeah. I'm only counting four. Yeah. Okay, oh, there's yeah, the bolt. There's the bolt. See, make him kill it. Don't play that extra Liliana unless you have to. If, in fact, John has it. No, Planeswalkers. Now it's a 5-6. Yeah. So I him for five. Got another path in there, buddy? Oh, my yeah. oh. gosh. Did he really? Nope. Justin top Weeks five. top decking every answer he needs 
and that ancestral vision is going to go off in a couple turns. So and even running out turns, of cards, right? Yeah, in two turns it yeah. goes off. So even when he's even now that he's out of cards, he is still he's on the top deck. Yeah, and he's hoping still, that John has nothing to really hurt him. No, no, he's he's going to have an ancestral vision going off in a couple turns. He's actually know, you know in charge right now. But here's a traverse the Olven Wall out of Justin. Ah, one of the cards that I need to make this deck. Is he going to get another Tarmogoyf here or Grimflare? No, another Tarmogoyf. Okay. Tarmogoyf is bigger. Tarmogoyf is bigger. It's yeah, uh, it's a, yeah, it's a much faster clock. Yeah. It's a five. Was it five six? Tarmogoyf is a five six. Yeah, Tarmogoyf is a faster clock. I was just wondering if he wanted the faster clock or just to stack his deck. Nah, I mean stacking the deck will be good if he can better. But look, he's deck thinning also. Yeah. He's so he's he's trying to get the full amount out of everything. So he's going to fetch, probably shock himself because he yeah. can only get shock lands out of it. And let's see if he's got the death shadow. I uh, wonder if he's getting the red-black one. Probably. Either that or red-white. Or black-white, possibly. Maybe black-white. I don't know if he plays... I think the red-black is better because then it gives him access to Death Shadows and Lightning Bolt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, I'm sure if he's shocking himself, he wants to play Death Shadow here. That's the only reason... Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, but even Death Shadows will only be a 1-1, one, one, so mm -hmm. I don't know if it's a really a wise decision at that point. Maybe he's fearing an eventual Supreme Verdict mm -hmm. if he doesn't play Does it he here. have enough land to do that? He's no. got three land, but he no. could top deck a land. I, I'm saying eventually. Justin yeah. Weeks has no hand right now. Nope. He oh, it's Stomping reason. Ground, and he's going to cast oh, he's another picks. Traverse the Oldenwald off it. So that's what it was. So now Traverse the Olenwald is yeah. going to get that. Now he gets the Grim Flare into his hand. And he gets a land? Is he not getting another land? No, no, no. The Traverse the Olenwald grabbed the Grim Flare. Oh, oh. Tarmogoyf was in his hand. Yeah, he he cast the Tarmogoyf. Okay. And then he fetched Shock to get another green source, and then Traverse with that green source to get gotcha. Grim Flare. All right, let's see what Justin top deck now. That's land number four, Ghost Quarter. Pretty strong here. Oh, yes. Very much so. Last turn, one turn left for Ancestral Vision. We know Jepson has the Grim Flare, but he's going to swing five. the Tarmogoy first. 12 to 12. And so here Grim comes Flare. here comes Grim Flare. Should be. It, it depends on, you know, no, he's going to pass. He's, he is respecting that Supreme Verdict. Mm. So four cards going to reduce his hand. There's the Blood Moon. Yep. And a Serum Visions and a Steam Vents, and I think that's a Plains. Yep. So not what, exactly what Justin needed here. He needs some type of board wipe or some way of producing mm -hmm. blockers. He's going to go ahead and cast this Blood Moon here just yeah. to turn those two dual lands into mountains. In response, ghost courting away the forest. Away oh, the it's swamp. a swamp. So he doesn't have the mana yeah. for the Lily. For the Grim Flare, either. Or the Grim Flare, yeah. yeah. So he's, he's getting both. Surprised John didn't choose to get a free shuffle out of that. Oh, yeah, he's, he's picking him up now. He is doing that. Okay, he, he was still deciding while Justin was making the play. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. It's fine. So good use of Blood Moon here. Pretty heads up play by Justin Weeks, making yep. use of that Ghost Quarter before it turned into a mountain. So the only thing that he has is a Steam Vents that's now just a mountain. Yeah, but he's okay with yeah, that. Yeah, no, he's he's mana fixed perfectly. He's taking five yeah. for his. Uh... He can top deck Supreme Verdict at any time to get rid of this Tarmogoyf. Mm hmm. But right now he definitely needs a blocker. Oh, oh, another, another Tarmogoyf. Wow. Have we seen all four from Jepson? Uh, that's going to be lethal if Justin can't that's find three. an answer. I think I haven't. I don't know if no, that's just, four. I don't know what he just top deck. He plays that Steam Vents from before. It's a mountain, of course. No, I think that's a new Steam Vents. There's two Steam Vents. Yeah, I know. So, yeah, he played. He, he, played, he had one from earlier in the game, from turn one. I'm just curious on what he's going to do now. I'm trying to see what he top decked. It was a Snapcaster Mage. Oh, Snapcaster's yeah. good. Okay, we passed a John's turn. He swings at both Tarmogoyfs. There's Snapcaster. Snapcaster. He's going to chump block one of them and then path the other. That that is the correct play. Yeah. But will that actually happen? It depends. I don't know what's in yeah. green that yeah. can help Jepson here. Surgical oh. extraction. Oh, nice! Don't need a green spell. You just have to exile all paths. Yeah. Wait for the target. Yeah. So Jepson going to go to 10, but a small price to pay to thwart that Snapcaster Mage and get every path to exile out of Justin Weeks' deck. Very nice play. Yeah, hopefully he's going to make sure he sees all of them and gets all of them. I forgot that promo Surgical Extraction existed. That is such nice art for it. I think I have a place that's signed. Uh, you do, but it's not that art. I know, it's the original. Yeah. Anyway, so one of those Tarmogoyfs is going to bring Weeks oh, yeah. down to two. He is in bolt range, very, very dangerous territory if he cannot find <laughs> an answer to these Tarmogoyfs. Yeah, and even the stomping grounds of Mount, so John definitely has the red. Unfortunately, Weeks is... Ooh, Ooh, whoops. That was weird. Don't don't slip your cards at people, man. <laughs> yeah. 
So, unfortunately, he's, he's stuck on the one blue source again, thanks to his own Blood Moon. So, if he's going to make use of the Serum Visions to dig, he needs to top deck another blue source. Yeah, so but he needs, he, needs to, he needs to top deck... A basic island. No, he needs to top deck Supreme the Wrath yeah. right now. He did he find that, it? Or, you know what would do well also? The uh, Celestial Colony, that's not going to do it. What can do it also is if he decided in... Uh, Wrath of God. No, and what's he, the other one? Yeah, Engineer Mujo? Explosive. No. Um, no, Engineer. No, he's the only has two mana colors left. Tarm goes to two. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He All just right. puts it on two, and then he just uh, he activates. Yeah, I forgot. It. I forgot. Engineer <laughs> exposes was a thing. You're yeah, right. Yeah, he, he just needed a top deck anything that was a board wipe that he can do for that amount. Okay. So that's what, whatever the case. Uh, Justin did not find any of these wrath effects that we're trying to rattle off the top of our yeah. head. So Justin's going to take game two. We are going to a game three. Yeah, I mean that was a strong, aggressive play by John on game two. He was just very straightforward, going straight towards him. Didn't, didn't see much hesitation. Played everything well. The surgical extraction was a very nicely timed mm -hmm. play. As and that that if it wasn't for that, it, I think it would have been a still uphill battle. Well, I, honestly, I think both of these games' pivotal moments have come down to Justin Weeks' spell snare. I tell you one thing though, I, I'm really surprised that John doesn't have more than two basics in his. Deck. I, that, I'm that, not at all. I'm not surprised at that at all. That's actually normal for this deck because its mana base is pretty greedy. I, I don't disagree that the mana base seems to be very greedy from what I've seen so far, but it's modern. People are playing at least three, if not four, of the paths on top of playing Snapcast the Mage if they're playing blue on top of it. So that's eight. Get eight basic lands. I would run at least four. Uh, that, that, that seems way too many. Four? For, for, for a four-color deck, way too But many. it's a splash of the fourth, isn't it? Well, yeah. What, Lingering Souls is the only thing that I've seen that has white so yeah, far? Yeah, it is the only thing that has white, I think. Yeah, so what else are they possibly putting in that has white? What, Gettig Teague? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, Gettig Teague does stop pretty much everything that the Traverse Shadow deck doesn't want to cast. and lets it cast everything it still wants to cast. True. So, I mean, I guess that could be a sideboard I mean, okay. card. Okay, it stops them from hardcasting uh, Street Wraith. Which I've lost to that before, but for some reason I'm drawing a blank on Street Fighter right now. The three four was Swamp Walk that cycles for two oh, life. Oh, him, yeah. Okay. It, it hard casts for five. I've actually lost to a hard cast in Street Wraith before. Really? It felt it felt awful. I was I was God. borrowing a Grixis control deck that night <laughs> and got I just ran out of answers. God. I, that that's that's a little funny. Him getting to five mana to hard cast that. Yeah. That, that's that's harsh. Yeah, it felt bad. It felt really bad. But yeah, like I said, both of these, both of the pitiful moments of these, both of these games, have really come down to the spell snare, because we saw Justin Weeks use it to great effect when John tried to slip a Grim Flare underneath that mm -hmm. mana leak that he knew. But he got Justin rid of it in the second game. I think he should have held on to it. The second game, the second game, Justin Weeks opted not to hold up his mana for it. That I think was the fatal, on yeah. that because he should have held it on, waited until turn two to cast it the uh, Serum Vision, so then he still had the mana open for it. Yeah, and he wouldn't have had to use that first path to exile either, but exactly. he didn't have that first path to exile at the time, so it felt like just a bad play in general at that point. Yeah. Maybe maybe he top-decked it there and we just didn't notice, and that's why he went ahead and did Serum Visions? Possibly, but it, like I said, it's just really... I think that that was, that was Justin's uh, fault. Yeah. Entirely, I, I, I would have just you know leveraged that spell snare for all its worth. Oh, entirely but, yeah. play that thing like there was no tomorrow. You, you know me and cheat permission. <laughs> I'll, I'll sneak cheat permission even into decks that aren't controlled. Uh, too bad Daze isn't allowed. Uh, <laughs> that that would be funny. This ain't legacy. Uh, is he getting oh, up to go to the bathroom? He might or be is going it... to the bathroom. <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, 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 while we're on while we're on a quick potty break here, once again, Neverboard Gaming Community, don't let the name fool you. We like board games too. That's a nice custom playmat he has, too, with the Charizard. Sick. You know, I was looking at the top. I'm okay with the look of the top one, but I really would want to see that colored. I do, too, but it's that's that's a really good playmat, too. We were complimenting John Jepson on that the last time. See, I just, had him on I, just I don't know how much I like it, though, because I, I, it just it takes away so much. If, if it was more like a contrast where it went from, like, black to white and different shades of grays in it, then I think I would appreciate it more being like a black and white photo, but it's just line work on a white mat. It, so. It's it's really good line work, though. I mean, it almost oh, feels like coloring it. I'm not saying it's bad. It, it almost feels like coloring it might like ruin it, because it looks like a comic book, you know? 
That's what I'm saying. I just feel like it should be colored, though. I don't know about colored. Either but colored or some type of value. Do, do some it. kind of, like, you know, gray shading. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean, value. It, it needs some type of value work to it. I definitely definitely I need some for the scale. I think if you did, like, a monocolor value, like a bluish gray, like Ooh, a tealish gray. Like, oh, yeah. no, metallic gray. Yeah. You know, have yeah. that metal look to it and have that throughout the piece. Yeah, that'll look cool. It, 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 if, that. if he can find the original artist or perhaps some other artist to do that yeah. for him, I think that would look very good. Yeah. Anyway, so whatever Justin Weeks took the break for, he's back. So we are going to kick off game three here. It looks like both players like their hands. That or Jupson's still thinking about his. <laughs> I think Weeks likes his, though. It looks like he's got a nice ratio of lands to spells. Oh, he's taking a while to look at it. He might be thinking too far ahead. Uh, I, I wish we had a better angle so we could see how he's well, seeing it. We, we've gotten comments about this before. Oh, yeah, Jefferson's going to mulligan. We've gotten comments about this before, about the camera angle, and we are planning to fix that. Uh, but for right now, we just have that one cheap camera, which is unfortunately bouncing now because of the shuffling. Hopefully that'll stop shortly. The, the setup that we have for this camera is nowhere near as glamorous as you might think. It's sitting on top of a cardboard box. <laughs> Illusion broken! I think it could be better. <laughs> Weeks showing off his uh, hand here. See, I wish John did that too so we can actually see. Cause I, j oh, yeah, no, oh we're actually going to get it. Oh, we saw some glimpse. He should have put it a little bit lower, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't tell what most of those were. I did see Mishra's bobble in a land, though. Yeah. At least we know he has the turn zero. Yeah. I mean, cast an artifact and get Grimfler faster active. He's still deciding whether to keep his scry, though. Justin Weeks is on the play, so. See, now, would it be wrong if he just, like, let us see what the scry was to see if he wants to keep it or not? Uh, as long as Justin can't see it, I think it'd be okay. But this isn't, this this is casual REL, so. Yeah, but. You can get away with a lot of. But we're trying to be as professional as we can with this. Yeah. Oh, there goes an island. Serum I think Serum Visions. visions. Yep. Yeah. Always with the turn one Serum Visions. One of the best cards in the format, in my opinion. See, I, I'm very iffy on that card. I, I like it, but I'm, I'm not very, like, ooh, ah, about it. I just love the ability to stack top decks. I love this thing in tandem with Nahiri, back when Nahiri Jeskai was uh, a thing. Oh, yeah, Because you could, you could set up your next draw off of the discard with their plus two. True. That is a very ooh. earn one Inquisition for the third game in a row. Just oh wait a minute! Wait a minute! Is he yet. is he going for a shock land? Going to fifteen like a true person would do? No, no, no. He's going to seventeen because that's the Inquisition, not a thought seize. Oh, he's got a basic swamp. Okay. Oh. He's trying to avoid the Blood Moon. Remember? Yeah. That's so true. I see Lightning Helix Restoration Angel. That's what that white card was, and two Snapcasters. What do you take here? I would personally take the. It was either going to be between the Lightning Helix. Or, well, it's either the, the Lightning Helix or one of the two Snapcasters. Obviously, those are the only yeah, things you can do. Yeah, yeah, I forgot it's not a thought seize. Um, choose me, I'll get the Lightning Helix. Actually, prevent my opponent from gaining life. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, seeing two Snapcasters. I, and that's why I wouldn't kick. No, see, it's going to take one of the Snapcasters away. Mm. I, I think just you know, two bobble. Oh, ho, 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 double bobble, all the way across the sky. Oh. Now, does he crack the second one and then look at the top of his own library? That's, that's or does he just wait? No, he's already drawing an extra card. He's not going to draw the extra card until um, the upkeep, though. Yeah. Right. I guess he chose to keep it. Yeah. Well, no, it's not It's not a choose to keep. It's, oh, surgical extraction. And he's getting the Snapcaster. Yes. Yep. I like the play. Yeah. See... That's once again. If he had the surgical in his hand, why didn't he just go for the burn and get rid of all of his burns? So then the snapcaster mage didn't worry about it except for path at that point. Because getting you see what I mean, no, though? no, 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 I don't see what you mean. Because getting snap, getting all the snapcasters out is better. It lets him stop reusing any of his spells. He gets double ups on every spell as long as he's running four snapcasters, and he is because of course, the only better card he could have hit with that is Geist. Oh man, if you got the Geist, I don't think. I mean, Bresto would be his way winning. Bristol and uh, Elspeth? Yeah, that's about it. Maybe the Colonnade? Well, the Colonnade, yeah. yeah. Because the Colonnade did get involved in that uh, last push in the first game. Yeah. But yeah, I, I like this play a lot by John Jepson, taking out the Snapcasters. So that's why he took one. I was a little confused about the play before, but now with the yeah, Surgical, it makes really, perfect sense. I was really expecting him to get a shock land. To try gain his life as low as he can, as quickly as he can, to play the Death Shadows. I've yet to see him play a Death Shadow. 
Yeah, he hasn't resolved one yet, <coughs> but um, no, right now his main concern is to just make sure that he doesn't fall victim to the top deck blood moon, because Weeks has top decked a lot of good cards. Oh no, we have seen a lot of top decks from him. It's uh, definitely interesting, Justin's uh, top decking skills. And I honestly don't think he cares about the lightning helix, because Justin's going to shrug at that and go, sure, target my face. All of my creatures are going to be too big. The, this is true. That's why he didn't bother with it. You know, maybe Jess guys should just add a little bit of black so then they could put Fatal Push in it. <laughs> you and your four-color decks. This is why I told you to put together Traverse. I don't own the one card. I can't do it. I'm sorry, <laughs> friend. <laughs> Oh, did Jefferson miss a land drop despite what? drawing two off the Mishra's Bobble? That's a... Uh, of the Mishra's Bobbles, plural, I should say? That's interesting. Oh, that's not good. He had such a strong opening, but he kept a one lander, apparently. And he's just stuck on Why did, did he... black. Oh, wow. That's that's harsh. Does, does he have some other play to make up for this, though? I don't know. This is a... This can be a very bad game for him. Ugh. To such a strong opening, it'd be kind of disappointing if he fell behind just because he couldn't find land. Mind you, Traverse Shadow does not play that many lands, like 17, 18, maybe 19 land. What? I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, Traverse, when you have Traverse the Ovenwald in your deck, you can get away with a lot of things. You can get away with a lot of greed. Oh my god, I would, in that case, oh my god, I would never have gotten a basic land for my first one then. That is Suspend more... Ancestral Vision. Justin's going to be sitting on a lot See, of cards. Ancestral Vision I like. I'm not going to lie. I like it a lot. Oh, did John pass back? Still didn't top deck a land. Ooh. Oh, this is going to be a very disappointing end of this match if he can't yeah, come back. Yeah, it really is. And a guys. And there's the guys that's going to kill him. Justin's in big, big trouble now. And he's scoop. just going to scoop he's him just up. Gonna scoop. Not yeah. even going to bother playing out this game three. No. He is too far behind. Oh, yeah, by far. Yes. That's game three. Justin Weeks is going to take it two to one. And that'll do it for us here from the Neverboard Gaming Community. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. We'd love to hear from you. Have a good day, everybody. See ya.